that's not cool. Uh, or, 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 not even, hey, dude, that's not cool. Like, okay, missiles launched. I mean, there's varying degrees of, of, of uh, association. And they devolve to eventually missiles. There will be missiles, okay, everybody. Everybody will have a fucking missile in Paltopia. I promise. I promise everyone a missile in every, every two car garage. Missile in every two car garage. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not promising anything because I'm not right for anything, so. The only thing that I promise you is, uh, well, actually, I don't, I don't promise you anything. No, I don't. I promise to do or die and always try and corny, corny, by and by. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick with early humans and I'm going to talk about these early humans. God dang, early humans. Uh, I mean, really. These dudes were, were scared shitless. They're like, holy fuck. Like, can you imagine being like an early human baby? You know, early human baby? You know, early human baby, no, 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 no. I mean, I, 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 don't, I mean, I think that there is something to, like, a genetic or whatever it is, transfer of, of memories. And, uh, and so, so that, that, that baby would have had probably been a lot more closer to this, those, those, those primal samenesses that were being transferred among many humans who across the, the globe were, such as they were, they were, uh, they were always facing the, the possible end of, of everything. Small bands of people struggling to live and, uh, proud of themselves when they're probably, I bet, I bet it was a, I bet it was a status symbol to have, like, ten families running together. That was running like, holy man, look how they got their shit together. Holy fuck. They got ten families, Dan. Dude, Dan. Dan. Look at this fucking, look at, look at that fucking group over there with the, the fucking blue penis shit. Son, I told you not to stare at the blue penis shit. Man, dad, it's there, it's fucking there. They obviously want you to look at it. They made it brighter than every other part of their fucking body. Are you kidding me? Yes, I'm gonna look at the fucking blue penis. Are you kidding me? Why do you even judge me about this? But man, they're, they're like, they got more people. And they're like, like, dude, man, imagine being in that group going fucking hunting. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know, when you get that, uh, them woolies, them woolies fucking mammoth, them bitches. Man, them fucking bitches is vicious. Them motherfuckers are vicious. Woolly mammoths will tear your shit apart, man. I, can't, I don't even want to tell you what happened to my brother because everybody knows, it's like, you know, everybody, you know, even when they look at me, they're like, they look at me and they're like, they said, yes, yes, it's just like your brother. You look just like your brother. Yeah, that's, that. I mean, that's cool. That's cool. But, you know, that everybody thinks of you and they keep reminding you of, you know, that moment in your life when you were hunting with your brother, you're, you know, you're identical twin, you know, whatever that, I mean, that, that's freaky in and of itself. It's like, I don't know what the fuck that shit was about. Like, what the fucking rock god motherfucker did that? That was weird. I was like, right away, that set me apart. Like, fucking freak of something. You know what I mean? I mean, life wasn't good for me right from the start, man. I mean, you people, you you, you non-twin privileged people, you don't know what it's like, man. You, you get born in a situation and like, there's two of you, and you look alike, and everybody's looking around like, what the fuck happened? Wait a second. And, you know, you just pray. You just fucking pray that when it happens, like... Whatever crazy thought that got in the head of this group that it, that it, that it didn't result in sacrifice, one or the other. Uh, and, and then, by the way, if we're going to sacrifice, let's hope it was for the weaker one. Because, yeah, bitch, I was not the weaker one. See, that's the thing. My brother was a fucking weasel. Fucking pit bitch ass. Bitch ass, stanky ass motherfucking, weak ass fucking woolly man upon it. You know what I'm saying? Couldn't, couldn't fucking handle it. Told him how to do that shit. And I said, dude. Whatever you do, don't get directly in front of that fucking woolly mammoth because if you do, bad things are gonna happen to you. Like, yeah, we, you you can't you can't deal with, and that, and that dude sees you. I I met that dude that, that that's like that that's like next level crazy, okay? That's like next level crazy. You know, like when ladies get all fucking blotchy and shit, all that nasty shit they deal with, whatever that shit is. I don't even know. They get all fucking whacked out. Yeah, it's like that because it's like way. 
I mean, you like, you like, you like, do like live home, you find them in, in like that, that blotchy world thingy that they do. And you're like, yo, man, so good to see you, girl. And you never say that during this blotchy season thing. Never, never. You know what I mean? You don't do that shit. <coughs> so, so yeah. That's, that's the life of the early humans. There you go. I took you back in time. I, I, uh, I, there was nothing spiritual or uh, otherwise uh, occultist involved in that. There was no actual uh, uh, talking with any uh, dead individuals. This was purely Paul playing a character, which Paul imagined that that character was in time, back in time. And of course, that means that my brother, my brother Bill, would be back in time. And of course, it means that of course he would get killed. He would, he would get killed in the, in the, in the fucking hunt. He would get fucking mauled down in his prime. Before he got a chance to become like the witch doctor, he would have got mauled. They would have sent him out. He's like, they made a mistake. They should have never sent him out. I told him, dude, this is not going to end well for him. Uh, and it never even described how he died. <coughs> and that's the thing. I spared you that point. But uh, uh, the point is that, you know, they looked at that tribe and they saw, hey, there's a, there's a, they got a lot of bigger numbers, man. We can... Uh, you can do something with uh, bigger numbers, you know. That's something to consider. I mean, I mean, when, I mean I'm sure these tri these tribes are never never thinking of cities and towns, and, you know. <clears throat> I mean, and then there's you know to a certain degree there's this prestige. Well, the prestige creates uh, uh, well it creates a market for um, individuals who have a certain talent, and that certain talent is they kick ass. Whether they can or cannot, doesn't matter. The perception is what's real. But although, in those times, perception will only get you so far. And in action, if it's not followed, will get you killed if it's not followed. In action. But well, basically, <coughs> who kicks ass, man? Who can we get under that kicks ass? That, like, when we know who we go into battle, dude be like, fuck that woolly mammoth. You know? So... It's kind of my theory about maybe possibly how it was that uh, people had uh, had it in on how to uh, sell people on the idea of uh, coming close to living hovels. <coughs> in which, uh, I mean, you look at Katul Hayek, uh, and it's like a very, very pueblo of like, it's like, it's, just, it's almost like one big massive structure. And you look at the places and they look gloomy, man. It looks like, I mean, it looks like a you know, third world apartment complex is what it really looks like. Now, the fact that it was like, I don't know, 6,000, however many thousand years old theoretically it might be, well, that makes it a little bit more uh, <coughs> amazing. But still, it doesn't mean that their lives were any better. The people that lived in, in Kataloyak, I mean, it looks, uh, I mean... They buried their dead in their apartments, okay? I'm just gonna say that. They buried their dead in the apartments. So, uh, just, to, just to put that in perspective, and they, and they chose that life over running free and uh, more forager, you know, like, uh, you know, by the time you come to Katol Huck, you, you've come a long way from from these early bands and maybe some status with, like, dude, look at that man, that dude is, like, He's got a donkey dick. You know he's got a fucking donkey dick. Look at that guy, man. Fucking walking around with ten fucking families, dude. Ten. I shit you not. Ten fucking families in that group over there. Holy fuck. I mean, that would be amazing. That would be hard to sustain. And if you can do that, man, you get, you gotta have some good organizing skills and you gotta know how to... You gotta know how to deal with the physical nasties, man. You gotta be a kick butterer, man. Basically, you gotta be... What, what a surprise, by the way, when, when uh, so much of human history required these physical specimens, kick butterers, that so many of these tribes, not all of them, but, but, but so many, overwhelming majority, <coughs> a, a, a hyper super majority, ended up producing patriarchal communities. Is it because they're misogynistic or, or yeah, um, yeah, it's because they're misogynistic pigs? They're woman haters? Are they bigots? No, man, it's like, uh, everybody's like, yo, man, you know, like, whatever, you know, life is short and stuff, and, uh, you know, please don't let that out spear me in the ass and kill me, because it looks like it's gonna happen, and then, motherfucker chief dude, intercedes again, fucking de deals that out then, <coughs> just in time, that's the kind of dude that you want to have lead you, man, so, so women, they were, uh, 
I'm sure that uh, that there there were exceptions. See, and I, and I bet you in those times, this, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm I'm totally theorizing here, but I'd be willing to bet that if some woman rose up, and like was like kicking, like she was the one that that slayed the mammoth. That I, I don't think that a bunch of men would come together and say, "Yo, man, she's a woman." They might be a little freaked out about it. Not not too much, I don't think. And I think then, uh, if she could hold her own, I, I don't think anybody would have made an issue of it. Um, the fact is that hardly any woman could hold. If you take the top female physical specimen and you place her <coughs> against the top male specimen in terms of physicality and uh, ability, like to maneuver that physicality, you know, skill, practice, whatever. You take the best of the best in both those fields, the man will crush the woman. I mean, even if you make sure their physical status, stature is similar, it's going to crush the woman. Because fundamentally, the male physique is is just, it's, it's uh, overwhelmingly, it produces much more physically able organisms. Uh, than on the female side. <clears throat> and I'll define male and female as having uh, having uh, uh, genetic uh, organs or, or, or yeah, yeah, you know yeah, you know, your little giblies down below have the have the penis, have the vagina and then the penis is uh Mostly aligned with that whole testosterone glandular structure. And the vagina is mostly aligned with that whole estrogen structure. I think that's the fundamental divide in the glandular world. I'm not 100% sure of that, but uh, that's what I've been led to believe. So, out of way, that the, uh, the, 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 the overwhelmingly typical male um, glandular structure matches the... the uh, the giblets. Uh, in that case, that's what we're talking about. It would be males that fall into that category, where the uh, all of uh, you know the 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 the, the glandular structure and the uh, and the atom and the and the, and the, and the penicular structure are matched. <coughs> their their penisosity their penisosity is matched with their glandulosity. There you go. So. So, and then, you know, if you think about, uh, so if males are overwhelmingly physically stronger than females at the highest levels, I think that the, the physical differences aren't as, as acute if you measure them out on the, on the main. So that's a lot of mistake people make in assuming because, because the strongest female can't come close to mesh as the strongest male. It doesn't mean that that female beside you, that, uh, I mean, her, the, the percentage of, oper you know, chance that uh, she will be able to beat you up uh, is, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it, the, the difference really isn't that great. <clears throat> if, if, especially if you're talking about situations in which possibly she knows what you're doing, she's doing, and you don't. But anything, anyway. <clears throat> The differences are only acute at the top levels, not necessarily at all the squishy middle levels. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not even average when it comes to athletic. I'm well below average when it comes to athletic. So I think that a well below average uh, unathletic male and a well below average unathletic female, that uh, I think all things being equal, the unathletic male will probably, I don't know, Put them up against each other in a fight to the death, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say that he that he'll win like sixty five percent of the time. Uh, that means that the female will win thirty five percent of the time. That, I mean, this is just my my guess. It's not scientific at all. Uh, and then the other, uh, but but between if you if you take the highest class level, and you have that fight to the death, then I think that the difference is gonna be like ninety eight percent. Male versus two percent female, because there at the highest levels the differences are so stark that uh, it'll be it would be basically the female would have to to get a really a really effective lucky first first uh, shot early on in the fight, <coughs> most likely, 
Because uh, if she doesn't get a really a good shot early on in the fight, man, he's going to wear her down like it's just going to happen. Uh, yeah, because remember, this is a fight to the death. This isn't like submission, you know. She might even break his arm in a submission move, but he still is going to end up killing her. Why, why do men abuse their wives? You know, I believe that one of the reasons why men abuse their wives is because it's a fundamental level. Uh, men understand that uh, you, you've you got to, I mean, this is a physical reality at some point. If women want to take over, at some point, women, you're going to have to kick our butts. If, if, if that's your goal, if you want to force a, a matriarchy upon us, you're going to have to literally kick our butts. You're going to have to go into bars and have fights with men and kick our asses. That's, that's, that's like, that's kind of what has to happen. So, good luck. Uh, I don't like your chances, by the way. <laughs> and, and by the way, I'm not, I'm not encouraging it either. I, I'm going to go into a bar one day and some, some crazy lady is going to be like, she's going to clock me too. So that's the thing. She's like, and she's like, you know, Paul Gordon gets online and brags about not being able to get clocked by a female and I'm dominant men over for women. And then he gets decked. Of course that's gonna happen, man. A fucking of course. And it, you know what? I hope it does. Because that might launch my career. Because I can totally milk that shit, man. I can get material out of that for fucking days on fucking end. Man. Remember that time when I, I got knocked out by that a lesbian feather person thingy? Yeah. Oh, look, I got clicks. Oh, yay. It's gonna be like that. And I will milk that shit, by the way. I will fucking milk it. I will milk it to the fucking hilt. Because <clears throat> that's how I roll. But this 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 attachment to this uh, whole physical threat thing, avoiding physical threat, I, I think that this is one of the core drivers of human beings. And I believe that the... The... The conclusions that, that many people have come to, uh, maybe there was a time when they were right, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to say yes, but I'm not going to say no either. I kind of lean towards maybe they were right. And that is that, uh, yeah, you know, maybe when push comes to show, the better thing is to, 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 to preemptively uh, pounce on people before they can pounce on you. And to be prepared to do that. And uh, that's kind of what people have... Anybody that has accepted a law type of system, and law is, is a gun pointed at someone. That's all law is. Well, first it was a wish that then had a gun pointed at someone. Now, actually, that is all it is. Now, there are some laws that never make it to that last part, in which case they just remain what they were originally, which is... Uh, a wish. Somebody's wish. I wish that I could point my gun at these people for this particular reason. That's what a law is. And then, that's in its wish form. And then sometimes it becomes a law in action when somebody actually shows up with a gun to actually enforce the law. So, that's what law is that is law that's carried out. And we know certain laws are more faithfully carried out than others. So, we have traded off trying to avoid the physical threats ourselves to willingly become the physical threats in other people's lives. We've traded off. We imagined somehow that that was the best trade-off for us and that really we live in a world where that's just the reality, man. No, we are not actualizing any of this. We're not coming to terms with these these, these, these uh, base assumptions that have been made. Rather, once the assumptions have been made, we've created all types of religious and philosophical and mathematical and scientific uh, ghosts that, uh, you know, these ghost shields that prevent us from having to look at the fact that what we've actually chosen is that, yes, I am willing to 
point guns at other people in an effort to, uh, you know, I should add to that. I'm willing to point guns at other people who haven't harmed me and, and, and what they're being pointed at for, they haven't harmed others either. Yes, I'm willing to do that. And in exchange for being given more security that uh, the world around me won't physically threaten me, especially at the highest level, which ironically, at the highest level, the highest level was initially, I believe, emerged out of this, this, this primal human fear, this primal human uh, awareness of their physical limitations and their compulsion to counter that fear, uh, that hyper awareness at the very least, <coughs> with uh, hyper physical protection vigilantism. Hyper physical protection vigilantism. So I think that's where maybe possibly these uh, force of enterprises initially begin to emerge. I mean, even. I've done a study on the, uh, you know, the, the, the Hittites and the Romans have some things similar with each other. They're really quite interesting. The Hittites emerge from a whole bunch of different tribes in, like, central Anatolia, where everybody was constantly waxing everybody, and they were, they were constantly uh, at war with their neighbors. And when they finally consolidated power around them, the first thing that they did was they built this this weird fortress citadel which was designed to be like almost impregnable to physical threat but it was done so at a high cost and it, it uh and it it kind of produced an industry on its own and uh, it was uh, it was an empire factory uh engine is what it was and and it was designed for the hittites to build empire it was designed intentionally. It produced certain types of discipline because you needed people, because of how remote this place was, you had to have a really disciplined chain of uh, supplies coming into the city, and uh, it, it manifest power in and of itself because of this. All Everything was coming to this city. And this was the city of record, too. And, man, they keep a lot of records. So, so anyway... Um, they uh, they wanted to build an empire, but 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 they they recognized at one point, you know, they recognized the limitations of their empire, and they they you know when they when they encountered uh, the Egyptians in Syria, uh, they they recognized their limits, and so they 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 didn't want to build an empire to take over the whole world, they just wanted to build an empire that would essentially make the core people. The Hittites in Hattutsa, whatever it's called, yeah, I think it's called Hattutsa, uh, the city, to make them physically secure. I mean, this is my theory. That 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 was that that's what this was all about. And it was all about making a sm small group of people secure at the expense of everybody around them. But uh, never mind that. They were going to have a measure of physical security. Of course, it unfortunately for them, it didn't last long. As there were issues that happened all around the region, around 1200, that uh, kind of ended many, many civilizations. And the Hittites didn't end as a civilization, but they ended as any kind of meaningful power. And uh, they were then divided into multiple kingdoms for a while before eventually they kind of oozed into the surroundings, became the blood of many of us today, probably. Anyway, the Romans, same kind of deal, man. They, they emerged, they were Italian tribes, and they were constantly at war. And uh, the Romans themselves, they were originally under the, the, the thumb of, the, of uh, the Etruscans. And they had Etruscan kings, and they overthrew their Etruscan kings. And they, they finally vanquished the Etruscans, and then they conquered the Etruscans. And they had to keep conquering... And everybody that they were initially conquering were people, they were conquering them to protect themselves. They didn't want to be uh, <clears throat> uh, conquered because everybody that's all everybody was doing. And they, they worked their way up through it. And, uh, and then Carthage was on the scene and Carthage, I mean, they've had some vicious shit happen to them in their history. 
Uh, I mean, in like three, whatever is it, 390 BC or uh, I don't think I have the date exactly right. Uh, <clears throat> Rome gets sacked by the, by the, I think the, uh, what is it, the Gauls? The Gauls? Uh, is that, the, uh, who the hell sacked? Yeah, I want to say the Goths, but I think it was the Goths. But anyway, they get they get sacked by the barbarians and no, oh, the Celts, the Celts. They get they get sacked by the barbarians. Is basically what happens, and uh, yeah, that 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 uh, that was pretty vicious. And then uh, you know they have uh, Carthage, uh, Hannibal. At one point, you know he goes right right down the the middle of the boot and. Uh, decimates Romans one battle after another and uh, uh, oh man just horrors upon horrors happened there and uh, it was uh, well, I mean, there was a battle there that uh, they lost uh, I think it's the battle of Cannae Romans lost like 50 it was the most amount of soldiers that they lost in any one day they, uh, allegedly allegedly they lost 50,000 soldiers in one day in a battle with uh, with Hannibal leading the Carthaginians, and uh, eventually the Romans, you know, they, they they met the Carthaginians at sea, and the Carthaginians crushed them, and so then they they captured Carthaginian vessels, and they built their own versions of the Carthaginian vessels, and they built better versions, and they just kept building and sending out ship after ship, and the Carthaginians eventually started to get almost as good as the Carthaginians and eventually man, the Carthaginians they're gonna get uh, d deleted Carthagist de electum as uh, Cato the Center would say which would lead to the ultimate termination of the Carthaginians so that's a later story but uh, the Romans they emerged as empire makers out of uh, fear a fear of uh, being taken over, and the only way that you could avoid being taken over was to take over everybody else. And they were the, they were well conditioned, and so you had, uh, you basically created a really effective uh, tournament uh, by happenstance. You create a really effective tournament in the in the hills of Italy. <sighs> When uh, you had all these uh, Italic tribes fighting each other, uh, they were always always at war, uh, always on guard. They were very militaristic. They had to be because they were always uh, basically it was you know I guess nobody could uh, take uh, take take over as much power. And the thing is, man, they had fertile lands. Man, they had plenty of stuff worth fighting for. I mean, people weren't just gonna move away. It was like, no man, this is good shit here. Ain't going anywhere, motherfucker. So they fought. <coughs> and, uh, so it, it was like, uh, you know, good training ground for the Romans. And they created a few generations of very hardened, uh, uh, pros. I mean, these were not full time soldiers, the Roman army, but, uh, they met regularly enough. To, and it was, you know, it was a patrician thing. You, you know, weren't in the army in, the, in those days if you didn't own land. So it was. It was only the well-to-do that actually fought, <coughs> so uh, sent their kids. Uh, uh, so, uh, so yeah, those early Roman. I'm talking about. I'm not talking about by the time we get to uh, uh, to Kenai. I'm talking about the way, way, way before that. I'm talking about when the Romans were not the Romans. And, uh, Rome was just a dusty settlement <coughs> among the four, the seven hills. Uh, but. You know, they cut their teeth on that, they developed a mentality, and, and, it, and as it so happened, as they got to every level that they would get to, they would get to a level, and that level was to protect themselves. But as soon as they got to that level, they, they, they encountered somebody else, whether it was Greeks and Syracuse or whatever. They kept encountering people that were like, uh, immediately, they met with people that would interfere with their domain, would threaten them. And so, and don't get me wrong, I, I'm not sure that the Romans wouldn't have threatened outward right from the start if, if, if they could have. Um, they, that never really happened. <clears throat> I would say the moment the, that that really happened was uh, for, for, where, for certain where I could say, oh yeah, this is total empire building here. 
uh, is uh, when the when the Romans decided to, to finally uh, intercede with the uh, the, the little uh, disputes going on in uh, in uh, I guess the northern Greek area, the Macedonia, whatever. Uh, then they came in, but then when they came in, man, they did the smackdown on all of Greece and pretty much said, now this is ours. That was when, when Greece finally learned that it was uh, under the, the they, they were no longer just like good clients. They were like, oh no, 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 no. You are now a province of the empire. <laughs> you are emperor. Well, you, they didn't call themselves an empire then, which, but, but they were already. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> anyway, they emerged from that and that type of mentality, from that needing to survive, always in survival mode, always looking to protect yourselves against assaults. And uh, I, th I, I think it might have been, uh, especially in early human history, for for much of early, well, early human existence, for for overwhelming majority of our existence, I believe that the physical was the f most fundamental form of influence in the lives of human beings. Most important consideration, I would say. Uh, so, that is why civilization emerged. Civilization was a product. And ultimately, of course, unironically or ironically, however you want to look at it, civilization ultimately produced like, uh, even grander threats of violence than the violence that uh, people were initially trying to avoid. So, epic fail. If you ask me, epic fail. Anyway, oh, we'll, we'll continue this conversation another time. Thank you. Thank you for listening.